In this video, we're going to discuss two different types of behavior diagrams, the activity diagram and the sequence diagram, and explain when you should use um, both of them. And we're going to use the same example for both the activity diagram and the sequence diagram. So we'll get started. So what you're seeing here is the sequence diagram that we're going to be talking about. And you see the activity diagram that we're going to be talking about. And so to get started, we're going to explain the context of what we're talking about, which is the pizza store. So we have the pizza store, which is comprised of, for this example, these five different uh, blocks, the staging area, the pizza oven, the boxing area, the warming wrap, rack, and the checkout area. So with that, we can step forward. So this is the activity diagram, and this is the initial node. This is the final node. So we would be starting here. Across the top, we have our swim lanes or activity partition. And we have our part properties across the top as well that look very familiar to the staging area, oven, boxing area, warming rack, and checkout. So these are part properties across the top. And then these are actions. So this activity partition is in usage. So it's an element of usage because we're doing an action is an element of usage and a part property is an element of usage. You can actually uh, change it if you wanted to and do element of definition and then you'd have uh, blocks in the top here and then activities, not actions here. Moving on. So we'll go ahead and just run this in simulation just to kind of show the, what's going on. So we're first uh, receiving a phone call requesting pizza. Um, Entering details in the computer system, spread the pizza dough, add sauce, add toppings, and uh, the customer is arriving at this point as well. Uh, we're, we're baking the pizza, putting it in the pizza box, slicing it, and putting it on the warming rack. Then both once the customer arrives and the pizza is on the warming rack, the customer pays for the pizza, the customer is given the pizza, and he can leave. So that's the sequence of events, or that's the flow of events that we're seeing here in this activity diagram. So now we'll see something very similar in the sequence diagram. So this is the sequence diagram. I'll go ahead and run simulation on it. And we'll slow it down a little bit so we can see. Let's go ahead and run that one more time. So the order's received. The pizza order details goes to the staging area. They spread out the pizza dough, add pizza sauce and toppings, bake the pizza, cook the pizza, remove the pizza, box and slice, pizza to the warming area or warming rack, and then it's given to the customer. So we still have the same sort of um, behaviors going on, but the, this diagram is more focused on time. What happens first? What happens next? And um, we have some constraints here on the right side that we didn't have right this 20 minutes and this seven to eight minutes this this two hours um, so we have some constraints that, that we're not in the other activity diagram so it, it's just very easy to put our constraints here but for example this constraint is just saying hey we can't leave the, the the completed pizza on the warming rack for more than two hours before it goes bad um, and these time frames are very easy to see on the sequence diagram while you could have it added to this uh, activity diagram, but it would just be a little bit more difficult to see and interpret. So that's kind of the compare contrast. The activity diagram is much more of a broad modular diagram than the sequence diagram. The sequence diagram is more of a special case, more uh, difficult to work with. So if you don't know off the top, which one to use, I would default to using the activity diagram. And if you're having to deal with a lot of time related information, then I would go towards the sequence diagram. Hope that helped.